On today's episode, I'm going to show you how to create digital art by removing detail using Photoshop and Topaz Studio 2. This is episode 50 of my Topaz Studio 2 Creative Toolbox series. Hello and welcome to the joy of editing with Dave Kelly. Today I'm going to show you how to turn this image into a beautiful piece of digital art. It's going to be very simple and easy. We'll be using Topaz Studio 2 as well as Photoshop. I'll be using three filters inside of Topaz Studio 2. And basically what I want to do is remove detail from this image because when you remove detail, you take the photographic quality away from the image. But we're going to also build some detail back up. Don't worry. And after after three filters in Topaz Studio 2, this will look like a really nice piece of digital art. And thanks everyone for all your comments on my last Topaz Studio 2 Creative Toolbox series because we want Topaz to keep making these great products like Topaz Studio 2. And please continue to comment in the comments section below and let Topaz know strongly that you want them to continue making software just like this or updating this piece of software. Let's get a nice dialogue going and hopefully Topaz will see it. Thank you very much. Well, let's get started. And by the way, you can download this uh, stock image. I'll leave a link in the description below this video where you can download it and follow along with me. It's a great way of learning. And this is a really cool picture to try this technique out on. And this type of effect will work on many different types of images. To start out, I created a blank layer above my background layer. And I just click this button right here in Photoshop. And that just gives us a blank pixel layer. And now I'm going to use the uh, spot here healing tool it's found right here it may be in a different spot on your photoshop depending how you have it set up now you can just type j to get that spot healing tool but very importantly make sure you have sample all layers checked on okay this way you won't be painting on your actual background layer you'll protect it but you can see here some of the junk that i cleaned up some of these areas i just wanted to clean that up before i took it in i'm going to turn this layer back on now there's a couple more spots i need to clean up and with that uh, spot healing tool, I'm just going to paint over these. Sometimes you got to paint over them a couple times just to make sure you get it. And then once you've got it and you're happy with it, you could come over to that cleanup layer and you can uh, right click on it. And all you need to do is click on merge down. It'll merge it down into the background layer. Now I want to send a, I don't want to send the background layer into Topaz Studio 2. So I'm just going to duplicate that layer. Now that's command or control J to duplicate it. I'm going to go ahead and call this TS2 for Topaz Studio 2 because again, I don't want to send my background layer in. I want to send a copy of the background layer. Now I'll go ahead and launch Topaz Studio 2 and we will get started. Now, like I said, this is going to be simple. We're going to come up here to add filter and we're going to come down to the stylistic section and see where it says abstraction. Click on that. This is a filter that removes detail. Now, all I'm going to do here is one thing. Take the simplify slider and drag it to the right. And notice when I drag it to the right, how detail starts to be removed. Can you see that? I can remove a lot of detail or just a little and I want to remove a decent amount, but right around here, 0.31, and I think I'm happy with that. Now, you can see there's some areas in here that kind of get blocked up, and I don't like that, but I'm going to fix that, and you're going to see how I do that, but I'm not going to do that just yet. Next, I'll add one of my favorite filters in Topaz Studio 2, and it's found in the Essentials section because it's a very essential and a very powerful filter. And this is a filter I find useful on a lot of the images that I edit. There's other editing software out there that has a filter similar to this particular one, but I believe Topaz were the first to come up with this, if I'm not mistaken. This filter has been around long before Topaz Studio 2 was even considered by the way. But the nice thing about it is it breaks contrast down into micro areas, small, tiny areas of contrast, low areas, medium, and high. And there's a bunch of lighting options in here and color options as well. So what I'm going to do is take the micro contrast, the small areas of contrast, think more like sharpening, and I'm going to bring this up a good bit, up to around right here, I think 61. And you see that detail? And if I shut this eye off, you can see there's the before and there's after. But you see the detail? You know, I drained detail out, but now I'm adding more detail back. I'm clicking on precision again to get the 
adjustments back up. And now I'm going to take the low areas of contrast and drag it to the right just so you can see. I'll stop along the way so you can see what it's doing. See what it's doing? It's finding lower areas of contrast and bringing them out. But I don't want to go too crazy here, but I think right around here. And I just let my eye tell me what it likes, and then I stop. And then I'm going to go with medium, and this will be a little larger areas of contrast. And I'm going to bring it up to roughly right here. And then the large areas of detail, I'm going to, or not detail, but contrast, I'm going to drag it up. And you can see larger areas get very contrasty so i'm going to bring this back i don't want too much of this back to like right here 21 and then the only other thing i want to do is i think i want to bring up the vibrance of this image and we have a vibrance control right down here so i'm going to drag this to the right and i'm going to bring it up to right around here now vibrance is a really cool adjustment because what it does is it looks for like weaker saturated colors and kind of boosts them up it's kind of like an intelligent saturation adjustment but that's all i want to do but let me shut this eye off here is the before precision contrast and here's the after so we're moving in the right direction if i left click and hold down my mouse you can see there's the overall before and here's the after now you'll notice i'm missing a lot of detail in the flowers here and again i said i have this area here where it looks a little bit all blocked up and kind of like stained glass and I don't want that, but I'm going to show you how to fix that. A lot of people use the abstraction filter and they don't like that effect when it gets in there. Sometimes it can make things look a little weird, but I'm going to show you a way to correct it. And it's simple, but not just yet. I'm going to add one more filter first. I'm going to add a basic adjustment. And all I want to do here, and I told you this is very simple and easy, is to take this black level and I want to drag it back and darken the blacks up a little bit. You see, I can really drag it back and really, you know, really darken up that background, that dark background. It looked a little anemic to me, so I want to drag it back. And I think right here, like a minus 0.26. What do you think? Let's shut this eye off. Here is before and here is after. And now we have lots of nice color saturation and contrast. I really like it. Now I'll tackle these detail areas that we've lost and how do you think i can do that one of the really nice things about working with topaz studio 2 is the fact that it is non-destructive so i can go back onto any layer and change things and they all will kind of flow with that change so i can come down here to the abstraction filter again click it and open it up now here it is how can i get rid of these areas in here if you're thinking layer mask you are 100 percent correct so I'm going to click on this icon right here and it adds a mask to that layer. Now it's a white reveal all mask and we have a bunch of different tools in here, but we're just looking at the brush tool right now. I'm going to click on the brush tool. Now you'll notice we have this transparency slider and don't let this slider fool you. Right now it's black. So if I paint on here, nothing will happen. Yes, yeah, something will happen because I'm painting with a black brush. I'll reveal the original image underneath here. If I take it and drag it the whole way to the right, it becomes a white brush. But just like in Photoshop, if you're familiar with Photoshop and you adjust the opacity of your brush, it's the same thing. Think of this as brush opacity. So in other words, if I drag this back to around like 40 percent or 40 that's like having a 40 percent opacity on a brush like say on a black brush okay so it's like a gray color okay we also have a radius here so i'm going to take my radius and make it a little smaller can you see the radius got a little bit smaller i'm going to make it even smaller than that and then you also have this uh, edge aware and it's turned on it'll grab around edges of things and that's a really nice feature of uh, topaz studio too it's like smart uh brush technology so if i want to bring back some of that detail remember i'm at 40 percent like right here in this flower watch i can bring a little detail back you see that and on this flower here so i'm just looking for areas that i want to bring detail in i'm going to get to this here in a sec but let me go ahead and fix some of these flowers up here just like that and you see these nice sunflowers look i can come right in the center and bring some of that detail back isn't that cool so in other words, we drain detail, but we can also selectively bring detail back anywhere we would like. Isn't that cool? I get excited. Now, I could just paint in between this petal here, but I'm going to go ahead and paint over the whole area because I think it's going to look nice. Yeah, it does. 
If I'm going to bring some detail back on this leaf up here, I can just simply paint and bring some of the detail back. And maybe on this leaf as well in here and on that little bit of a bud there, I think. And then we have this little piece of grass. I'm going to make my brush a little smaller. The last thing I've done was adjusted my radius. So if I use my left bracket key, I can make that a little bit smaller and I can paint on this flower. I'll make it smaller yet and paint on this piece of grass right here. Isn't that cool? And bring, about, bring back some detail. Here's a Queen Anne's Lace, I believe. I love that name, Queen Anne's Lace. Bring some of that detail back. Maybe on this little bud right here. And maybe some of these uh, leaves down in this area. I'm going to make my brush a little larger and just paint some of the detail in here. Remember, I'm not painting all the detail back, just some of the detail. And you selectively choose what areas of detail you want to bring back. And I might bring some back on some of these over in here as well. Even on like down here, what are these, like some kind of a hot pepper? Let's bring some of that detail back and maybe in here a little detail. Here's a, I believe this is a peach cut in half. We'll bring some of that detail back. But isn't this fun and simple to do? But this is masking. Let's bring some of this detail back. Now here's some corn here. We can bring some of that detail back. And as I recall, these are some kind of uh, berries, maybe some raspberries in here. We want to bring some of that detail back. And here's another maybe piece of corn. I like the way these, I believe, tomatoes look. I'm going to leave them just the way they are. Now here's a nice leaf here that I'm going to paint in and I'm going to paint here. Here's another flower. And you get the drift. I may miss some of them, but I'm just painting things that I want to bring some detail back to. And maybe on this leaf right in here and here. You don't have to get everything. But now in this area here, I'm going to paint just like this in here. And you see, now the details come back in. Isn't that cool? So these areas that look like stained glass are now looking like sticks. <laughs> Let me call them sticks. I, sometimes I, when I'm doing this stuff, I am at a loss for words. But you know what I'm talking about, these little stems. Maybe that's a better way of calling them. My mind freezes from time to time. But forgive me for that, please. I am human, you know. Okay, I'm only human after all. So isn't that cool? And look for things and point anything out. I wish you could talk to me. If, if you could, that'd be great. Point anything out to me. Now, if I, hit this, if I hit these over again, not like Photoshop where if I paint over it again, I'll add more of the effect. I'm only adding that certain amount of effect. So if I wanted to bring more detail back, I would have to drag this more to the left to bring more detail back or to the right to remove more of the detail. But I like it. I like everything that I'm seeing. So right there. And may, I might get right up in here. Bring a little detail. Yeah, and this as well. And again, you don't have to hit everything, but I'm really happy. Now let's go ahead here. Let me left click on the canvas right here. Here's the before and here's the after. But isn't that nice? I am so happy with the way this is turning out. And I think at this point, I'll say I'm done. And if you look right here, you can see the beautiful mask I have created. It looks like a piece of art in itself. But once we're all said and done, we just come up here and click accept, and that'll send us back into Photoshop. And here we are back in Photoshop. Let's see where we've come from. I'm going to shut this layer off by clicking this eye. Here is the before. Kind of dull and flat. And now here is the after. Much more contrast, much more pop, much more saturation. And now I believe we have a really cool piece of digital art. But there is a problem, and I don't know if you can see it, but let me zoom into this image, and it's always good to zoom in. You see all these little white flecks, these speckled flecks? I didn't notice those when I was in Topaz Studio 2, but I'm noticing them here. And we can fix this. And I, when I first got my image back when I was doing the uh, pre- edit before the tutorial, I had this problem and I'm thinking, how can I fix this? And I've come up with a really cool and unique way in my opinion. And that is to do this, take this TS2 layer and duplicate it. That's Commander Control J to duplicate it. Then come up here to filter and you're gonna find a category called noise. And inside this category, you're gonna see a bunch of different filters in here, but you see this one, it says dust and scratches, click on that. And this dialogue comes up for dust and scratches, and you can see all that has magically gone away. 
Uh, if I go to different areas, we may see some. Do I see any? I'm just looking to see if it's all gone. Now, I'm at three pixels. Now, I'm going to change this radius down to one pixel. And you can see there, there's some of them, some of them left. But let me go to two pixels. And here's the little takeaway here. Just take this up one pixel at a time and really hunt around. You don't want to overdo this because you'll drain other detail out of the image. Okay. But I think I'm going to take this up to be in the safe side to three pixels. Okay. It drains a little bit of detail out, but not much. And I'm going to click OK. Now I'm not done here. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and fit this image to the screen. So at this point, I want to hide this adjustment and there's a reason for it. So I'm going to hold my option or alt key down and click on this layer mask. And that puts a black hide all layer mask. If you have the TK8 plugin for Photoshop, you can click this button right here. But you see all my little speckles are back now here's the tip zoom in and all you need to do now is get a white brush at 100 percent opacity right now i'm still using the spot healing tool that was the last thing i used before i left photoshop so i got to get a brush tool type b for brush and make sure it's a white brush if you don't have white and black here you can just hit your d key that'll give you the default colors of white and black and with white paint at 100 percent opacity and if you don't have 100% opacity, you can type zero. That's a shortcut. And then all you need to do is vary your brush size. You can be very loose here because it won't eliminate too much detail here. So you can just simply paint away the flex just like so. Just stay away from the interior of the flowers. But look, I can come right in here. It's going to remove very little detail because I'm only using three pixels. And just go around and find any white flex that you don't like, like in here. And look how we can magically just paint them away. And I find that quite exciting and quite effective. And all these little flecks go away. So when you're working in Photoshop, there's many different ways of tackling problems. And there's tons of tools in Photoshop. And make note of this one because this can really help you out somewhere down the line somewhere. It definitely is helping me out on this image. There's one in there that I missed. And just like that. Now I'm going to go ahead and click this button on my TK8 CX panel. And that just fits it to screen. Or I believe it is Command-0. I believe is the shortcut Command-0. Yeah, to fit the screen. You could do that as well. But there we go. Now here is my overall before. I'm just holding my Option or Alt key down and clicking on the background. Here's the before and now the after. And all those little white Flex are gone thanks to the dust and scratch filter. Don't forget that one. Mark that one down somewhere and save it. You may need it someday. Well, there it is. I hope you give it a try. And if you do, please let me know what kind of results you got in the comment section below. I'd love to hear from you. If you enjoyed this tutorial, please give it a like, share it with your friends. And if you're not yet a subscriber to my channel, please subscribe. Click that bell notification icon. Then every time I upload a new tutorial, you'll be notified about it. Well, I want to thank each and every one of you for joining me today in the joy of editing with Dave Kelly. I'll see you all right here next time. But until then, happy editing.